This is Joanna Short from Augustana College. In this video, I'll show you how to find today's value of a commodity from the past. This is a common question people have when doing genealogical research or writing a history paper. You run into the price of a good from the past and you wonder, was that amount a lot back then or not that much? Since you didn't live in that time period, you don't have a feel for average wages or average prices at that time, so you don't have a good way to put that amount into context. Today we'll focus on finding today's value of a commodity, by which I mean a consumer good or service. As an example, we'll use the price of a 1909 Model T Ford. Our approach would differ slightly if instead of a commodity, we were looking at an income or wealth value, like a salary, or a project value, like the total cost to send man to the moon. But for any of these questions, we can use MeasuringWorth.com to help us with the calculations. So let's go there for a minute and I can show you what it looks like. Now we're on Measuring Worth. This is an ad-free website maintained by expert economic historians. It is pretty simple to use, but if you still have questions after this video and want to read more, you can go up here to the user guide sections and check out the guide or the tutorials, or you can go over here to look at the blog section. So let's begin now to look into the value of a Model T Ford. The Touring model, shown here, was priced at $850 when introduced in 1909. This doesn't seem like much to us today. That's because prices tend to rise over time. There's been a lot of inflation between 1909 and today. However, earnings were a lot lower, too, so $850 still could have represented a lot of money back then. In fact, car sales really took off later, as the price of this Model T fell to as low as $290 in 1925. The question then is, how much was that? We need a way to convert the $850 to its value today. Commonly, people use the Consumer Price Index, or CPI, to do this conversion. The CPI is a measure of the average cost in urban areas for a basket of consumer goods and services. We can use the CPI to see how much, on average, did consumer prices rise from 1909 to today. We can then apply that increase, or inflate, the $850 into what it would be in today's dollars. In essence, we're finding if we took $850 in 1909 and increased it at the same rate as average inflation, how much would it be today? There are two main ways that we can use measuring worth to help us with this calculation. First, we can find the annualized growth rate of the CPI from 1909 to today, or as recently as we have data, and then calculate the total growth of $850 over that time period. The formula looks like this. Here, G stands for the annualized growth rate of the CPI, and N stands for the number of years the CPI is growing or compounding over time. So we can do this calculation if we go to measuringworth.com to find G. So let's go there. Now we're on Measuring Worth, and we'll choose the link over here for annualized growth rates. So go ahead and click on that, and you see that we can calculate growth rates for a lot of different statistics. So for the U.S. we have the CPI, but also wages, GDP, um, population, lots of other things. Uh, and similar statistics for the U.K., we have gold prices. Uh, we have statistics for Australia and also for Spain. And notice too that in parentheses for each of these statistics, we have the dates or the years that each statistic is available. Um, as I speak in 2021, all of the U.S. statistics have been updated through 2020. Obviously the 2021 numbers won't be available until sometime in 2022, but they will each be updated as soon as they are available. So let's go ahead and click on Consumer Price Index, and we need to select the years that we want the growth rate. So remember, we want to go from 1909 to 2020. And then we'll click on Calculate. And we can see that the annualized growth rate of the Consumer Price Index over that time period is 3.09%. This means that the CPI increased, on average, by 3.09% per year between 1909 and 2020. 
Now, let's put that uh, information back into our slides. Recall that we got a growth rate of 3.09%. So I'm going to plug that in here for G, but in decimal form that would be 0 0.0309. Also, I'm plugging in for N the number of years between 1909 and 2020. That is 111 years. So I'm going to compound the 3.09% over 111 years. When you plug that into your calculator, I get that price is increased by a factor of 29.31. Then multiply that by the $850, and we would say that the value of the Model T, when we inflate by the CPI, is about $24,914, something roughly similar to what we might think of the price of a basic small car would be today. Now, a second way that we can do the same calculation is, of course, to let Measuring Worth do all of the calculating for us. Um, so we don't need to even have a calculator. If we just use one of the comparators on the website for relative values U.S. dollar. So let's go back there and show how this works. Okay, now we're back on Measuring Worth, and we want to do a calculation. Um, of a relative value for a number which is in U.S. dollars. So we're going to click on this link for relative values U.S. dollar. And we need to input some more information. We need to, to um, tell Measuring Worth what is the initial year, the initial amount, and the desired year. So we're trying to figure out for the dollar value from 1909, the dollar amount is $850, and we want to know what that would be worth today. So for the desired year, we'll just put 2020, since that's the most recent date available. Then we'll click on Calculate. And you can see we're going to get a, a whole bunch of information here. Uh, the box at the top, though, says that a simple purchasing power calculator would say that the relative value is 24900 Now notice that that amount is very close to the amount that we found when we did some of the calculating ourselves. That's because Measuring Worth also used the CPI to do this calculation, and they just rounded it a little bit. So now down here, though, we have this warning that this may not be the best answer. It depends in part on uh, what does that $850 represent? Is it the value of a commodity, an income or wealth value, or the, the value of a project? Now we know that we have a commodity because we're talking about a Model T Ford. So therefore, we want to focus just on these first few calculations as our possible answer. But notice that the answers here range from $24,900 all the way up to $150,000 or more. These different values are just using different deflators. So they're Therefore, they're asking slightly different questions about what exactly do you mean when you are looking for the value of a Model T Ford. So let's talk about how we can interpret these different amounts using different deflators to help you figure out which would be the answer to the specific question you're asking. Let's take a closer look at the first result we get, which uses the CPI as a deflator the result we would call the real price of the Model T, and recall that we get a value of about $24,900, or roughly the same as about what a basic small car would cost today. Now, this result seems surprisingly low. I assumed that you would have had to be pretty rich to afford a new technology like the Model T when it first came out. We can figure out why this seems low, when we think more precisely about what inflating by the CPI does. Recall that when we use the CPI, we are only measuring inflation of a fixed basket of consumer goods over time. So this only reflects the value in terms of the goods and services money could buy. Thanks to economic growth, though, through technological and other advances, we are generally able to, to buy more over time, or a lot more over a long period of time. So if our question really is, how rich did you need to be to buy a Model T, then the CPI, by just adjusting for consumer inflation, doesn't really tell us that. 
In fact, the CPI is probably not the deflator that most people are looking for. If we really want to know how rich you had to be to buy the Model T, we should look instead at some of the other results. Uh, for example, we could use what we call the relative value in consumption, which uses the VCB, or the value of the consumer bundle, as our deflator. This is a good alternative to the CPI because the VCB adjusts for both changes in inflation and changes in consumption over time, hence we get something larger. You can think of this as a better reflection of the effect that spending $850 would have had on the average person's budget back then when people generally consumed much less than people do today. As a result, our value is closer to the value of, say, a luxury vehicle today. Another option is to use the labor value. This comes from using the unskilled wage, or the production worker wage, as the deflator. When we use wages, we get results that are even larger. This is because wages and benefits have risen faster than e either prices or consumer budgets. Again, thanks to economic growth, they've risen at a rate of about 5% per year. And again, that's why we get a larger value. This is a better measure if instead of asking how much the Model T cost in terms of the goods and services that money could buy or the effect on the budget, we want to know how much people would have to earn to pay for a Model T. In 1909, $850 represented about two years wages for a production worker. Given the growth in wages and benefits over time, that two years wages would now be somewhere in the range of $120,000 or $166,000. So these numbers are today's equivalent of about two years' wages for the average person. As a result, we get uh, an amount that is more consistent with, say, a high performance or even an exotic car today. Finally, one more way that we can measure the value of a Model T is to use GDP per capita as our deflator. GDP per capita is a broader measure of income, including not just the growth of wages, but also interest, rent, and profits. This would represent how much the average person would have to earn from all sources today to be comparable to a person spending $850 on a Model T in 1909. As a result, we get something that's fairly similar to what we got when we just measured the labor value. So now let's summarize the results. Notice that there is no one correct answer to the question, what is the value of a, of a 1909 Model T Ford in today's dollars? It depends on if by value you mean how much it cost in terms of a fixed basket of goods, a basket of goods that expanded over time, or how much income you would need to earn and save to buy it. A lot of people are confused by the wide variation in these values, indicating that buying a Model T was the equivalent of buying anything from a small basic car today, all the way up to buying an exotic car today. If you can focus, though, more specifically on the question you are trying to answer, you can narrow it down to the value that best answers your question. Also notice that these answers will differ more the further back in time you go. If you look for the value of a car you just bought five years ago, each of the deflators will give a similar value. It doesn't matter as much, in that case, which deflator you use because the differences in growth rates are only compounded by a few years. But the further back we go, the more compounding we're doing, and we'll see larger differences between the different deflators. So that's all for today's video. I hope this was helpful. Please look out for more videos to come.